I would just prioritize your conviction and your faith and catching the delusion itself as it's trying to project an enlightening journey out there in space, time, components, conditions, requirements. See through that and you'll be much more meditative and you will be believing in that and sitting down for eight hours a day for 10 days. In the immediacy at this moment, you're already timelessly free. Amp up the vividness, the clarity of this primordial awakefulness that's already here. Stephen? In regards to being available to God, a um, lot of the traditions I've been following were all about a vertical line. It was going up to the crown and get as high as possible and some traditions you had to go as deep as possible and then it was all about this. Um, the way we talked about it yesterday is when I uh, feel myself being available to God. It's not like going somewhere. It's just by uh, not investing as much in this, uh, in this contraction called me. So it feels like opening up. And that's a completely different feeling than all the work I've been doing trying to get there somewhere and get to bliss and get to whatever. Um, and in similar, like often in, in meditations, it's called like uh, at the end, come back. But if I meditate on God, I'm, there's no coming back. Like there is no descending back into my body or something. So could you clarify... Um, this, this, this tradition, this, does that have any value in the path? That's a question. If you're deluded, yes. <laughs> so it's kind of like that question. Um, because the path, any path is for anyone that's deluded about that particular topic, that's blocking themselves from that particular result. They call it whatever, enlightenment or peace of mind or clarity. So if you're deluded or obscuring yourself from that, then there is a, a path you could describe that removes that delusion, right? So this whole concept of an upwards line or horizontal path only applies to one who has a human mind. I don't know, here, human mind and thinks in terms of left, right, dimension, space, time. That's what it's used to, right? So part of your delusion is you've clouded yourself in assumptions of space and time, right? Both physically and, but also suddenly mentally, we also think in terms of space and time a lot. So it's infused in a lot of our ways of seeing and thinking and imagining things. Now, so then, in order to translate to your mind some message of God or clarity or some result that you desire, because uh, let's say there's a good teacher and they sense your heart. Your heart's not black, but... And they translate, that's what a good teacher does. It translates what's in your heart to your mind so you can sort of soften this dictator that you have going on here that's not really understanding what it truly wants. So if we translate this to your mind, it's got to go through a lot of filters. Like that's the art of teaching is taking your filters into consideration. I could give a completely different discourse to you than to somebody else who wants the same thing. But because of your associations, my language, my mannerisms, my way of teaching, my transmission, all of that will have to be adjusted if we want to have the optimal effect. So for a lot of people, since a lot of people, almost everybody is very much used to space and time as feelings, concepts, the way that we imagine things, we almost always need a direction. We don't understand that it's already here. We just can't compute that. So you seek for God, well, you have it. Well, no, give me something more. Well, okay, it's upwards. Ah, ah. <laughs> I see God is upwards. Okay, let me do it. So it's because you're deluded. And I don't mean that uh, facetiously. Well, maybe facetiously, but I don't mean it negatively. 
right? So it, because there's an, a veil, there's a filter. Otherwise, you would have what you want. You would know it. You would see it. You wouldn't obscure it. You would not be available for it as you started your question. So it makes sense, considering that our collective consists of many, many, many minds that picture in the same way from a physical linear point of view, space, time, left, right, up, horizontal means something, vertical means something else, within, outside. Because we have those dimensional factors, it makes sense for a teacher to say, hey, go within or go upwards and reach God and then come back. It's just kind of a way for us to create a little hole in the bubble of our delusion. We can like, wait, wait, and then come back. Woo -woo. Come back, just as one example. But ultimately, yeah, you don't have to go up or down or in or out or anywhere. And you don't have to come back from a meditation. In fact, you don't have to meditate. <laughs> so that's why I addressed the concept of oh, these are your arms already <laughs> you're already there you're already there what was I going to say yeah Oh yeah, so it's a cool way to think about it, vertical. It's, it's all right, we can do it. It's a little archaic. At some point you wanna get beyond that. You wanna kind of deconstruct your sense of space, time, location, as if that has anything to do with God. It doesn't, it's all part of the illusion. Even your concept of like going way, way big and vast like space, and then that's non-dual love and that's God, no. That's just in your thought. It's nothing to do with God. I mean, it is made of God, but it's not any closer to God than studying an anthill. There is no distinction. Right? No distinction. So that's still illusion. That's why I say call everything illusion. And the only place you can go is awakening. It's a dimensional shift, if anything. It's a density shift. So right there where you're at, you don't even have to go up and create a higher state and translate it to your mind, give yourself permission to feel like you've visited God and now you come back into a more carnal state of consciousness. Although there is some truth to that, but the way it's translated spatially just perpetuates a separation, perpetuates an assumption of me and God. And there is a separation whether it be a separation of space, separation of time or journeying or someday, or a separation of like space in terms of bigness or smallness. But all these things only exist in the human mind. It's the delusion that's now creating a picture of God. Here's the delusion, the web of many thoughts and assumptions and associations and space, time, imagination, conditioning, belief systems. And somewhere in there, you create a, an idea of God. All this is in your imagination. This is all the illusion. Inside of the illusion, you now have an image of God, backed up with direct experiences, different sensations that are also happening here for the most part, unless you're in the absolute. And so you, you elaborate on this image of God and you place it somewhere within space, time, journeying, evolution, relationship, whatever it is. If you just say no, it's nowhere. God is nowhere to be found. But you stay attentive. You raise your will without going anywhere. You stay right here. You don't go up. You don't go down. You don't go sideways. You don't empower yourself into enlightenment. <laughs> you don't go ground yourself into the earth in order to like balance yourself out. All that's good stuff. But... You just right where you're at, you don't go anywhere, except you raise your frequency. You raise your intensity of being. You raise the density of will. That's all. You don't, you don't touch anything. You don't create any forms. You don't produce any image. You don't go into any meaning. You don't create any light bulbs or like spheres of light or UFOs or angels or, sorry, just don't. If you want to wake up, don't do that. If you want to dream, 
a beautiful dream, by all means. And I'm all for that. Let's dream a beautiful dream together. Kumbaya. It's part of why I'm here. Big part of why I'm here. But if you want to wake up, don't give any interest. Be indifferent. As indifferent as you can possibly be, which means you're not going in your imagination over here. You're not going into space and time. You're not going into concepts of God and religion and spiritual practices. You're not going into angels and new age bullshit. You stay right where you're at. You don't go anywhere. All of it is the illusion. You simply raise your will right there on the spot, just like Zog says. Don't touch anything. In the immediacy at this moment, you're already timelessly free. Amp up the vividness, the clarity of this primordial awakefulness that's already here. In a sense, it's like empty space, but that's just another concept you think about. It's beyond that too. It just is suchness. This doesn't require you to go anywhere. In fact, when you go somewhere to try to get there, you're creating an image of God. And a lot of people think they found God. Now, yeah, you found an aspect of, you found one way to represent God, but it's not the same as waking up, you see. Does this make sense? The distinction? Cool. No judgment, I'm just saying. <laughs> and uh, therefore, it's a matter of denseness, not a matter of space, time, location. That's the beauty of the density concept. It's a matter of richness, right where you're at. doesn't matter how you feel. Doesn't matter where on the planet you are. Doesn't matter what your relationship status is. Doesn't matter how much you've meditated in the past or how pure your mind is or how pure your desires are. Right in this moment, you just increase the density, the richness, the vividness of being. That's it. You raise your density, your vibration, you could say. And then through that, you awaken to greater and greater clarity and truth. And then these concepts begin to seem empty. That's what emptiness is about. Emptiness is not that you are empty of like all the good stuff. It just means that all the things you've been imagining now, because of your higher density, you see through them as empty. They don't have an independent nature. God doesn't exist there. You are God. It doesn't exist there. So God is empty. You are beyond God. God's just a concept but you can raise your frequency of what you are. You can raise the vividness, the self-awakeness of the creator, which is what you are. So going up sort of a vertical sense is just sort of a metaphysical symbolic description. It's a way to relate through the filters of the physical mind to get somebody a sense of kind of going somewhere where they give themselves permission to see more of God and then come back. But when you raise your confidence levels, meaning I am God, when you begin to understand that, that I am all that is, I am God, you begin to repeat that as a conviction. Now it's like that heartbeat starts to increase in its richness, its vividness. You start to just know it, realize it. No longer have to go anywhere. You don't have to be a perfect Buddhist. You don't have to be a perfect Hindu. You don't have to be a perfect Christian. You can cuss if you want. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's more fun than not. Create likes to have fun. You don't have to. You can be very polite all the time. That's fine too. Doesn't matter, you see. And what matters is that you come from love. And that love just becomes automatic when you raise your density. And you don't fool yourself that you have to go anywhere to do it. Now, it's a high-level teaching, what I'm saying, because it goes against, it cancels out a lot of the filters that we have, a lot of the associations. It doesn't give you anywhere to go. Probably tomorrow you don't remember how to access this. You're like, uh, wait, what did he say again? I'm not. No, I'm not supposed to go there, but I'm just... You still think in terms of place, time, location. This is where meditation does come in handy. You can meditate so that you can see the emptiness of all that. You can deconstruct all that until it just doesn't appear. It doesn't... Or even if you do have those thoughts, because the mind's kind of holographic, it's got memory, it's got all these images come up and stuff. I have images come up. But none of it... None of it threatens your confidence anymore, you see. About what confidence? that I am God. Just There's nothing that you could imagine that would sway you from that. That's the fearlessness I was talking about. Even your own behavior, even your own mistakes on a relative human level and getting that reflected back to you 
even things that you hold resentment towards within yourself, maybe your judgment, even that. Like, yeah, I noticed that. And then, but, but so, <laughs> does that mean that I should go here, do this, and then come back to God? No, that's ridiculous. I can go there and do that. I can go take care of that. I can purify that. But it's got nothing to do with God, you see? It's got nothing to do with my worthiness, with my purity, with my already thereness, with my establishedness. That's up to my conviction. That's up to what I say is true. And the more convinced you are, the more purely and higher density of conviction you have, the less you'll create a need to go to a retreat center to meditate. Smash. <laughs> He's doing really good with this, actually. <laughs> because you really, like, look at it. Not, not you, like, <laughs> you know, also you, but everybody, look at it. Look at your constant. This is high-level teaching. I'm not trying to undermine meditation. It's one of the best fake tools in your toolkit. It's one of the best delusional tools available. So by all means, please meditate. Okay? But I want you to soften the separation connotations that you have developed around that, that continue to persist and can create more separation, more feeling unworthy and not good enough and feeling farther away from God and thinking more and more instead of being and relaxing and loving and having faith. Right? You all know that feeling, like beating yourself up about not meditating enough. Just look at the concept of meditation and see it for what it is as a concept first before you actually go and follow that instruction to meditate. By all means, go meditate, but first undermine your assumption about what that means. Going to a retreat somewhere to be in space and time different than your current space and time. So that what? Because God is more present on that, in that country or in the forest or, okay, so, but let's assume that's true, that there's more of God in the forest. <laughs> Even if that's true, then, okay, then you, what? You sit down for six hours a day in a particular posture as opposed to walking or doing your thing because... Well, God's more present when my muscles go like that. There's more chance of God coming through me. <laughs> Not God, more of God. Farther away from God, closer to God. And let's assume that's true also. So God's more present in the forest than it is here. And it's more present when you cross your leg. And it's more present when you spend more of the time which doesn't exist in a particular posture or focus. Let's assume all that is true. Then what? Pass the tree. Pass the tree, yeah. <laughs> good, good. So you see, first you got to see it's ridiculous to want to meditate. Now then if you still feel like meditating, go meditate. Sometimes I feel like meditating and I go meditate. But it's not to find God. You see? Now, it can be helpful to quiet your mind and go to the conviction, I am God. If you want to call that meditation, by all means. But you can do that wherever, whenever. It just requires remembrance or will. Does that make sense? It doesn't require that you sit somewhere for a long period of time. What you're going to do if you sit somewhere for a long period of time, cross-legged, you're going to hurt your knees. That's all. <laughs> That's the only difference. <laughs> In experience, you're producing. All right, not entirely true. So if you prefer to know God with hurt needs versus comfortable needs, you can do it that way because you have a like belief that says you're unworthy to know God when your knees are working perfectly fine and are not calling for your attention. <laughs> There's got to be some pain before there is the gain of God. Huh? No pain, no God. <laughs> now, that being said... <laughs> Um, I, I wouldn't throw it away altogether. I would just prioritize your conviction and your faith and catching the delusion itself as it's trying to project an enlightening journey out there in space, time, components, conditions, requirements. See through that and you'll be much more meditative than you will be believing in that and sitting down for eight hours a day for 10 days. 
you'll make a quantum leap by seeing through it. Because it takes 10 days, eight hours of struggle to do that. It only takes a second to see through that. That means you've gone through the entire Vipassana retreat in a second. The benefit you'd get out of that, if you do it earnestly with a high density vividness and believe in self, you have literally in that temptation made it redundant to go ever do that again. You see? If you cut through it with the sort of insight. You've literally had the entire Vipassana retreat in a second. Now that's a direct path. Not saying you cannot still then have the impulse to go do a Vipassana retreat or some other retreat. I'm just using Vipassana because that was Mesh's example at the time. And that's, you know, it's quite a strict kind of meditation only approach. So it's a good symbol for this. Um, but can be very effective. People have amazing results with it. But you got to be wary of that too with results and stuff. Because what's results? Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. It's alterations in your imagination. can be great if you want to have that. But just don't associate your worthiness as already being God with the changes in your consciousness or the results of a meditation. Because it just puts you further and further and further down a path that consists of your delusion that separates you from what's already here. You see? Now, that all being said, I'm also not advocating you go into the opposite extreme, which would be laziness, complacency. Oh, it's already here. Neo Advaita, Vedanta bullshit. Like nothing needs to be done. There's nobody here to do anything. Don't go in that direction either. That's also here. <laughs> yeah? It's not God. God's neither there nor here. Stop. Stop it and know that you are God. Period. That's the only meditation that's direct. And then again, it can feel great to sit down for an hour together and generate a group field inside the illusion to help planet Earth. Amazing. But it's got nothing or very little to do with your conviction that you are God, that you are free, that you are not what you perceive. And yet that all that you perceive is made of what you are somehow mysteriously, and that there's only one. But the oneness has nothing to do with saving the Earth. It's just a fun pastime for us to do while we're on this journey of self-deconstruction, self-discovery, self-empowerment. It's a beautiful, relative thing. So by all means, go meditate, raise the frequency of this planet together. We're going to have beautiful times if we continue to do that. We're going to usher in beautiful times that are relevant for the people where they're at, that they can actually digest and they can actually wake up from and they can actually empower themselves from. And people can live with greater joy and pleasure and clarity and remembrance. Beautiful, a worthwhile endeavor. It helps the creator wake up to itself. But when it comes to your own self-knowledge, first, investigate why you believe what you believe you need to get to God. See through your assumption. It only exists because you assume it is there. Just like a situation has never occurred to you. You've never been inside of a situation. In fact, you've never found a situation to exist because the tree doesn't agree. It doesn't see a situation. Does make sense? Similarly, we have so many images that produces illusion of God versus God versus me. And that there's somehow this big gap between the two. You have to perpetuate your thinking and your deluding and your assumptions and not investigate them to continue to create that idea. It's just an idea. It cannot exist. Even when you believe it with all that you are, it's still not different from God. It still only exists as God. It's an illusion. It's an idea. Does it make sense? There is only God. Be convinced of that.